Hello everyone and welcome to another official Tribal Wars video tutorial. I'm Marshy from the international community and in this video I'm going to be explaining who to farm and how to determine if it's a good idea to attack. Farming just means you are attacking villages and plundering the resources that village has produced. Farming is a huge aspect of the game because it allows you to get more resources which allow you to increase the rate at which you grow. A lot of this is situational, but I hope some of the information covered in this video will assist you in your decision making. As you look around the map, you may see a lot of smaller players in the area. Every single one of these are potential farms. I say potential farms because some are simply not worth the losses to farm. Before you have rams and catapults, you're going to want to strictly farm players that are inactive. You can consistently scout players or message them to determine activity. When attacking an inactive player, you just need to be able to clear the village with minimal losses. If the resources plundered equal to be more than the total cost of the losses in your troops, it's most likely always worth attacking the inactive player. Personally, I like to use my axemen and a small amount of light cavalry to clear villages because I don't want to tie up all of my light cavalry or I'm actually losing resources because of the resources missed from not farming other villages with them. You don't want to attack active players because they're just going to call Militia over and over while spending away their resources. It just simply isn't worth the risk unless you can get them to quit. The best way to turn an active player into a farm is with catapults. Once you have some catapults, you'll be able to consistently break down that player's barracks and farm. This will slow true production and Militia. Some players will quit within the first few attacks and give you a good farm, while other players may be very dedicated to see you lose as much as possible. A player to avoid is a premium farmer. These villages are often 250 to 400 points and have a hiding place at level 10 and a warehouse at a low enough level that you simply can't get any resources when attacking. These players aren't dedicated to the world they're on and will just call militia over and over until you leave them alone. There just isn't really any benefit to attacking these players, so sometimes it's just better to befriend them and ask them to let you know when they're done premium farming to see if then you can turn them into a farm afterwards or possibly noble the village if they've actually raised it in size. Fighting players before you have nobles is very risky and sometimes hurts both players involved. However, if you've decided you're going to attack a player and want to know if it's worth it to try and turn them into a farm, you'll want to take a few things into consideration. Troops, tribe, and reward. Being able to determine if a risk is worth the gain is a huge part of tribal wars and this can make or break the early stages of the world for you. The simulator is going to be your best chance to figure things out. No different than the inactive players, you want to be able to clear the player while getting more resources than you're losing. The thing to keep in mind is that there will be many attacks and a lot more potential for losses. If the player is in a large tribe and there are a lot of members nearby, this can pose a potential threat when attacking that player. In this situation, you may want to consult your tribe leader before attacking. So as you can see here, I pulled up a simulation of a potential attack. So in this scenario, we're going to imagine that we had already scouted the village, we knew there was 200 swordmen in there, and there are a total of 9,000 resources. So 3,000 wood, clay, and iron. As you can see here, I just wrote down a quick formula that I created that's going to show you if it's worth attacking or not. If you have a premium account, it will show the resources that you've lost from attacking right over here. However, since I do not have a premium account, I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. So as you can see, the cost of troops times the amount of troops lost is going to give you the total loss for that unit. So as you can see here, I have 130. The reason that I have 130 is if I select the Axeman, as you can see, there are 130 resources in total to actually produce one Axeman. So we take the 130 resources and we lost 178 Axemen. And that's going to give us a total of 23,140 resources lost, which equates out to 7,713 of each resource. Keep in mind that if you are attacking with Light Calvary and Rams as well, you need to calculate those losses as well and add them together. So now we're going to take the 9,000 resources looted, which is what I had mentioned before that there are 9,000 resources hypothetically in the Defender's Village, and then we're going to subtract the total amount of resources that we lost. 
In this situation, we didn't have to add in any other resources from Light Cavalry or Rams because we are only attacking with Axemen. As you can see here, we have a 14,000 resource loss. So if the player is inactive, what you can do is you can try and scout the village, figure out what level the resource pits are at and how many resources they're going to produce. Keep in mind that other players will likely farm that village within a few days after you clear it, after they've noticed that the player is no longer active. If the player is active, keep in mind that you're likely going to lose more resources because their barracks is likely still running and they may call militia if they haven't already. Now I'm going to pull up a second scenario. So in this scenario, we have lost 63 Axemen. The defender had 100 Swordmen. So now we're going to take the 130 for the Axemen. And we lost 63 units, which equates out to 8,190 resources. So knowing that we had 9,000 resources that we're going to be looting off of this village, we already have paid back the resources from the troops that we've lost. And now we can consistently farm that village to get more resources. So the big thing that's going to come into play here is what are you losing? What are you gaining? Are you likely to lose more if that player is active or is it going to be a one-time attack if the player is inactive? So I just went into a random spot on the map here and I wanted to show you a couple different examples of what I'm talking about as far as inactive players, premium farmers, and um, potential people that you may want to be looking out for for opponents defeated. So this right here, this 36 point village, as you can see, a lot of the other villages are somewhere around that 300 to 700 point range. And we have a 36 point village. So this one is going to be a player that has very clearly quit. They haven't even completed any of their quests. Same thing with the 76 point village. Sometimes these are good villages because they may have a couple troops and you can just wipe them out real quick. And a lot of times a village that's a little bit bigger like this is going to have some higher resource pits than this 36 point village. And then looking at this village right here, we have a 180 point village. Um, this player is in a tribe of seems as though maybe a couple people. They're likely premium farming, in my opinion. We could go into the history of the village and look into it. We could scout the village since they do not have a stable yet, since they haven't reached that 300 point area. But they haven't really kept up with any of the other players in the area. And you could follow the village history over the next few days, and that would likely tell you everything that you need to know about it. Some of the other villages, like the 300 point villages in this area, that are slightly smaller than some of the 700 and 600 point ones, these might be the villages that you would want to keep an eye on. Possibly if this player were to attack this player right next to it, and this was me, I might want to capitalize on that and take advantage of that and really maximize the amount that I can farm. Because if I was able to destroy a small army and consistently attack that player, I have a lot of losses to go because I'm looting so many resources from them. However, if the player is very active, they may be able to just send their troops out of the village and consistently make them and eventually hurt you. So it'd be good to make sure that you have scouts if you were to try and do something like that, as well as a solid army. And I would honestly recommend having catapults and, and rams especially too, to make sure you can keep that wall down to reduce your losses. So moving on from that, if you are feeling a little bloodthirsty, but don't want to take on a whole lot of risk, you can look around at players' opponents defeated, and you can see which players have recently attacked or been attacked. This might help you find players with smaller or no armies and allow you to turn them into farms with little to no risk. To be able to do that, you just simply go into the actual village information, and then select View Village File, click the player's name, view player history and as you can see this player has no opponents defeated or attacking or anything like that but typically there are going to be numbers here. Once you have created more farms in your area you may want to invest the plundered resources into more troops. The more farms you have the more troops you get and that allows you to build troops and your village simultaneously and that is the ultimate goal here 
to be able to produce buildings and troops all at the same time having your barracks and headquarters running 24-7. Creating large farms can make or break your future in Tribal Wars, and I hope this video has given you an idea of who to and not to attack and be able to weigh the decisions after viewing those scouting reports. Thanks for watching and good luck.